Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, church. How's everybody this morning? I hope I hope you're more awake than I am. <laughs> so uh, I got too many glasses. I always have too many pairs of glasses over here. Can you hear me? Good morning, everybody. <laughs> okay, listen. Let me tell you the deal. So Brother Lonnie cannot sing. He can play this morning, but he can't sing because he chose to use his voice for other things on vacation. <laughs> And uh, so this morning we was trying to figure out what we're going to do with music or whatever. I saw me and Lisa can handle it. I said that totally by faith. I'm just telling you. She's never said that before. <laughs> really? <laughs> he might not be able to play next week either if he don't behave over there. Sounds like Bruce. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we are glad to be home. We had a great time with all the grandkids on vacation and um you know some of our kids went and that's always a blessing i guess the biggest takeaway for me and all that is the lord allowed us to do that and just to try to build relationships you know i think they're going to remember those things more than any christmas present we ever bought them or birthday present or whatever it is so so y'all ain't getting no christmas presents this year <laughs> y'all got a vacation pay for <laughs> Anyway, God is good, and so we also got to see some of our other family, our East Texas family, is what I call them, the Swopes, and got to have a time of great fellowship with them, uh, and singing, and just and just talking about the Lord, and I just love those folks. They're fun to be around. They're they very are. pleasant. Love it. They're hilarious. Except Ralph, if you ever watch this, you stayed entirely too long. You, <laughs> you went out where you're welcome, my brother. No, I'm just kidding. Love you, man. Well, he said, why did you? Blow up, blow up, blow up, another blow up after for him. He can just spend the night. <laughs> <laughs> the brothers stayed at 1 o'clock in the morning. I'm like, dude, go home. <laughs> and I said, I don't care. I love it because who knows when you'll see, you know, yeah. you'll see the family again. Who knows? Oh, my, my, my. It's funny. Anyway, we had a great time. Uh, you were, yes, are you able to pray? I think, I, think I can pray. Hey, you know, God is good, and I just, I, I love him this morning. I'm just grateful and thankful that I can even be up here this morning. And Lord, just use us today, Lord God, and, and just let us be a light to those that may just need to see. They need to see you today, Father God. And forgive us, Lord, when we fail you in that area, Lord God. I just ask you to bless this service today, Lord God. We're going to sing these songs as unto you this morning because we love you in Jesus' mighty name. Jesus, amen. Amen. Hey, we hired a new drummer, so there's no telling what he may do. <laughs> Thank you. 
you sing every week without me. They better without me. We said no. We vetoed. No. We vetoed that bill. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> I don't like to do it without Brother Lonnie. I don't like to sing and play without him because I'm, I don't know. But I can if I just have to. If you make me, if you make me, I will.
about the Lord. Well, I'm on a, when I leave this world, it'll be because I'm too much about the Lord. Amen. But I'll tell you this this morning, I'm thankful that I got to see that this week. It meant the world to me to see a 37-year-old man finally get it, that God is the most, if we put God first, if we'll put Him first, I assure you of one thing, that you'll never walk alone. That's right. And another thing that's key thing for me is if he's first in our life, other people yeah, are going to see yeah. Miss Shelley, other people, if God's first in Lonnie's life, am I perfect? No, but Jesus Christ was. I'll tell you something. I hollered at one of my grandchildren this week so much. Within a five-minute period of time, I lost my, lost my voice. And I got angry, Dana. And I had to apologize to her. And I had to apologize to God and ask for forgiveness. And I had to say, Lord, forgive me for getting angry. Forgive my flesh for not putting down this old fleshly man. It's hard sometimes, but you know what? At least I heard him. At least I heard the Holy Ghost say, Lonnie, that ain't right. You can't claim to stand up here and preach and teach people of who I am and act like that. So I ask y'all to forgive me this morning for stepping out in my flesh this week. It's easy to do. And I want you to know if I can do it, anybody can do it. Because I'm in my Word daily. I live a, a life for God. He's number one in my life. And I want to tell you something. He's never, it's never, we can never do enough or get closer to Him. 
So when we live by our flesh daily instead of by our spirit, man and woman, as I talked for two weeks in a row, let me tell you something. We're going to fail and we're going to have struggles. We have struggles when we do everything just right. And I want to tell you today, seek God. Listen, when, when I step out of line, I'm thankful for the Holy Ghost. I say, Lonnie, you can't act like that. completely lost my voice. Completely. I couldn't even talk because I let the devil have a hold of me. People say, oh, that was just you being. No, it wasn't. Instead of letting God, I've done it my way. And I'm thankful this morning that I'm forgiven. That's His mercy and grace. He loves us that big, Miss Weezy. He loves us that big. When we can begin to call it on the name of Jesus this morning, in the name above every name, I'm going to tell you something. The walls shake, mountains fall. The mountains inside us fall first. That's what needs to fall. The mountains and walls that we have built. This is the only way that you can get that done.
it, the word provides for it, that written word provides for it. And that word became a human being. And he was given all power and authority. And before he left here, he gave it to us. Christ that allowed me to be able to live God like 
that allowed me to have a change in my life. So I, I want to say to everybody this morning, let's have a little mercy and grace over our family, over our friends, and over for sure over our children. Because I'm going to tell you something, the world's lost. The world is ignorant. They're not stupid. They're ignorant to God's ways because they don't know what God's ways are. I'm going to give, turn it over to Miss Weezy this morning for the offering. Let's have some mercy and grace today, people. Yes, amen. Hallelujah. You know, basically, I should have bought that T-shirt at that little shop. Y'all testing the Jesus in me today. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And even though, you know, not just at a family vacation, but just in everyday life, you know, yes. uh, people will. They will. I mean, but I got, but that Jesus in me has got to be bigger and stronger. Come on. So the other day, I don't even remember what situation it was. I don't even, it was before we went on this little trip, but something had happened. And I just thought the world's worst of myself because of what I was thinking or like, you know, well, I'll just, I'll just do that, I'll just do that, you know. But, the, but when it comes back down to it and I have to deal with that person or that situation, almost in... It almost, it, and now listen, this is all the Holy Ghost. This is because I have I tried my best to, to be that God hog and be a Holy Ghost junkie. So when I had to come back up to deal with that person almost involuntarily, my, I get mad at my own self because I'm like, I want to be mean to them. But what happens is this thing lies, just the compassion of God rises up in me, and I, and I just. I just begin to love them and bless them and still give to them. And then when I walk away, I'm like, dang it, that's not what I wanted to do. You know, my flesh did not want to do that. And I said, God, what, what is that? You know, and I put this thing on the a post that, or I know what it was. It's like, I just want to quit. I'm, I'm not quitting Jesus, but I'm quitting people. I've quit a thousand times. Tell them I've quit and I ain't doing it. I ain't singing. I ain't playing. I ain't doing nothing. They can read the Bible just like I can. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? They can just do, read the Bible like I can, figure it out. So, uh, so I have. I'm telling you, I have quit a thousand times. So then the Lord will say. And then what is so weird is after that happened, I heard a little mess. I heard a message about it from a respected minister that I really listen to a lot. He said the same thing. I'm like, that's not just me. So I'm not just abnormal. You know, and his ministry has done God. Gone no, no. Yeah, God, God has, has a way of speaking to us. And so, um, and the Lord reminded me, well, you said you'd do that thing. I'm like, well, I don't care if things do without me. You know, or you got this coming up. He said, well, would you just do it for me? Don't even worry about them. You know, he has a way. He doesn't get mad at us. But anyway, he knows where we're at, guys. He does. So but what I'm thankful for it's not that I get an attitude or, you know, my flesh tries to take over, but I'm thankful that I have put so much in there. There might be a little piece of Jesus crammed in over here that it has to work its way up or crammed in my foot. It has to work its way up. You know what I'm saying? I know that's a silly example, but it gives you kind of a just down in there. So we're going to talk about our tithes and offering today. And thank you, Lord, that you've provided a way for everything, a way to bless us, a way, an avenue, a system. Thank you, Lord. So if you have your tithing offering this morning, you know where the bucket is. And so we're just going to say what the Word says, okay? Come on. In Malachi 3, we're going to start in 10. And he said, this is God talking through this prophet. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. And try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out you such a blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. We're walking in that. Brother Lonnie and I are walking in that. I haven't always walked in that part, but I'm walking in it now. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. For your sake, Lisa. He's going to rebuke, thank you, rebuke Lord, the devourer. For my sake. Thank yeah. You, Lord. So that he will not destroy the fruit of your ground, nor shall the vine fail to bear fruit in your field. Basically, your paycheck, the, more you, the way he gets money and, and, and uh, provision to you. Says the Lord of hosts, and all nations will call you blessed, for you will be a delightful land. Yes, See, says the Lord. So when he, when this is happening in your life, the reason people are going to call you a delightful land is because you're going to be able to give out of the abundance, and out of the overflow, out of all that you don't have a room enough to contain. You're going to be able to take that 
and give it out. So there, you know, that's going to bless people. You know, <clears throat> and let's just talk about um, Luke six thirty eight. He said, "Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, to make room for more, and running over." Shall men, he's going to cause people to give back to you. Men. With the same measure that you use to give, that's the same measurement that's going to be used to give yes, back. Amen. It was, but you know when God's doing it, let me just tell you, it's always more. Because he, he's the God of more than we can ask. More, than, more than we can ask or think. Yes. He's the God of more. Uh, all that. Her, uh, podium over here for something. So y'all can give as the Lord directs you whenever out of a out of a grateful heart, that a cheerful heart, that's what he likes. Amen. You got it, sister? I'm so thankful for that you're here today. Oh, I'm thankful for you. We kind of planned that because we knew we were gonna be like kind of coming in from that vacation. Um, we needed to call in the the troops right here. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Yeah, I'm gonna go here and enjoy this. Get my Bible out. Okay, Brother Lonnie, do it yourself, Jenny. Okay. Oh, I'm so thankful for the Lord this morning. So thankful to be here. Thankful for the opportunity. <laughs> okay. Right, right. We're doing some housekeeping around here. There you go. I like it. And I can actually see both of them. Stand up. Lisa, stand up. I like it. I'm standing up. It's as tall as it gets. I'm so appreciative of the Lord and the presence that I feel here this morning. I mean, it's just so wonderful to be in His awesome presence and feel his mighty power in this place and it's so wonderful um what we're going to talk about uh this morning is um how does sin affect our relationship with god and it's one thing it's very basic uh to our relationship with the lord but i think sometimes we overlook some things of how we can handle things and how we do things um <clears throat> let me just pray real quick um before i start and Actually, Lonnie, why don't you pray? Father God, we love you this morning. We thank you for the opportunity to be here to receive your word. Lord, in our hearts and our minds, our spirits, Father God, thank you for the messenger this morning, Lord God. Just use her in our mighty, Lord God, that all this falls on the ground. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Uh, we're going to start at the beginning. We're going to start in Genesis. Uh, when you talk about sin, I think a good place to start is with the first one. <laughs> <laughs> right? Wow. This is the first one. Woo! Take it down to the root. Take it down to the root. Yeah. So we're going to talk about Adam and Eve. We're going to start in Genesis chapter 1. And I'm going to read some scriptures, but I'm not going to read a whole lot of scriptures regarding this because I want to save some time for the end because the end is awesome. I'm very excited about this message that the Lord has laid on my heart. Um, I was telling them before that I had really planned to go in a different direction, kind of use a different example. But a couple of days ago, I was uh, studying, trying to get everything organized, and the Lord um, really laid on my heart to do something a little bit different than what I had initially planned. Still the same kind of concept, but a little bit different. <clears throat> so let's start in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. And if anybody has anything to say or interject while I'm talking, just wave at me, and we'll yeah. just study this together. Yeah, girl. So uh, it says, And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air, over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the, the earth. <clears throat> I think one thing we miss a lot of the time in this scripture is that we were created in his image, in his likeness. We were given dominion yes. over the earth, over all the earth. All the animals, all the we were given dominion over that. This is what God gave Adam and Eve a little bit later. This is what he, he gave them. Let's go to chapter 2, verse 16 and 17. The Lord commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil shalt thou not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. <clears throat> so they were given everything. We just talked about the dominion. They were given the garden. Uh, paradise, perfect place to live. They had everything provided for them. Um, they didn't have to work. They didn't have to work. 
didn't have to do anything. It was all given to them. They had to tend the garden. Except yeah. one, one thing God asked of them. The one thing he told them not to do. You think about all the other stuff that he gave them. This is, he says, okay, I'm going to give you all this, but this one thing, don't do this. They only had one thing not to one do. One thing. <laughs> okay? Isn't that how it is? Don't eat of that tree. But what did they do? We all know what they did. They ate of the tree. Eve took. She was scared her husband. They both ate of the tree. They knew when they were doing it, they weren't supposed to be doing it. So you may, in other words, God said, he, he gave them clear instructions. You can eat of every tree in this garden except that one. Don't, don't touch it. it. Actually, somewhere in here he says don't touch it. Because he did more than they did. He, he was telling them, he was preparing them, basically, is what he's doing. Right. He's saying, okay, because he knew what was coming. He knew what was coming, right? He knew, you know, the devil's, um, how he acts and how he operates, you know? So he's giving them a heads up. And he does the same with us. So they took and they ate. Okay, so chapter 3. We're going to move a little bit past here. So in verse 1, I'm not going to read a lot of this. I'm just going to kind of paraphrase it a little bit. But this is where Satan comes to Eve. And he says, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden. So he puts that first thought in her head. What did God tell you? He keeps on the one thing that he told him not to do. He twisted it around. He twisted it around to say, <clears throat> didn't he say, did he say that really? You can't eat of that tree? Hmm. You know, he just puts the thought there. That's where it starts. Right. Verse 4, he put the doubt in her mind. He says, you won't die. God just doesn't want you to become like him. Uh. He doesn't want you to have the same thing he has. Which this is crazy this, because they were already like God. They were. <laughs> but he keeps on that one thing. And if you'll follow this pattern, if you'll notice as we go through this, our patterns of sin are the same. Same. To this day, right. thousands of years later, what does Satan do? First time he comes to you and he gives you that little doubt. Right? And then he says, God didn't really say that. It won't hurt nothing. It won't hurt nothing. Yeah. You're not going to die. He just doesn't want you to have good stuff. He just doesn't want you to have the best. He's trying to keep things away from you. He's trying to, to change your happy. He don't want you to be happy. Right? right. Okay, so, <clears throat> verse 6. She believed Satan. Right? Yes, she did. After God was clear in the instruction, told him, don't do it. She knew full well what she was doing when she did it. She'd already been told ahead of time what the instruction was, what God wanted, expected of them. She decided to do it anyways. Why? Why did she do that? <clears throat> she believed the lie of the enemy that said, he just doesn't want you to be like a God. That's what the word says. The word says, he doesn't want you to be like a God like him, basically. <clears throat> So what changes <coughs> after they choose? What what happens to Adam and Eve after they choose? Their eyes are open. Their eyes are open. So the first change is, you know, they they dealt well during the sin process. They doubted God and His instruction. They they believed the lie of the enemy. They no longer believed what God told them. Exactly. <coughs> they sinned. They went and put it into action. They actually did they it. They were no longer in obedience. Yeah, they chose. They chose disobedience to God. So then what happens after they after they sin? Now they're ashamed. Right. Exactly. Shame they knew man. exactly what they did when they did it, and now they're like, oh no, what did we just do? You know? It's the same thing with us. They can't undo it. It's the same thing with us. When the devil tempts you, and you go ahead and do it, whatever Say that, that thing again. is. Say that one more. When the devil tempts you, Who tempts you? the devil, Satan. Yeah, so God don't tempt you. He doesn't. You'll never hear the voice of God say, right. Go rob that store. Yeah. Right. He'll never tell you something. Yeah. Like that. Go ahead. Go rob okay. <clears throat> well, and, we, and we're also drawn away through our own lust and wants. Yes. Right. Okay. 
So now they're ashamed. They knew that they disobeyed. So what do they do? They run. They hid. They hide. They try to avoid God. Okay, up until this point, you know, they had a rela- their relationship with God. They had a dominion. They had a dominion. They lost that. Right. Who did it transfer to? The devil. The devil. Yep. They both are given clear instruction. I keep saying this because this is so important. Yes, it is. Because the, the Bible, our instruction for what's sin and what's not pleasing to God is right here. In this Bible, right here. He tells us very plainly. And you know, a lot of Christians, they want to key on the big ones like, you know, stealing and murder and homosexuality. But I'll tell you what else is a sin. Gossiping. Backbacking. Back, Backbiting. Backbiting them. Misspoken. Being deceitful. Lying. Greed. greed. Cheating. Greed. Rebellion. Huh? Rebellion. Rebellion. Rebellion against God. All those are sin. Okay, so now that we've kind of set this stage a little bit, I do want to look in verse 3. So the Lord looks for them. Chapter 3, verse 8. Sorry. The Lord goes looking for them. What does he say? I'm going to read it real quick. I don't want to spend too much time when on this. When the two of these breezes were blowing, the man and his wife heard the Lord God walking about in their heart. So they hid from the Lord. God among the trees. Uh, then the Lord God called to the man, Where are you? Yep. Where are you? You think God didn't know where they God were? God knew where he was. He knew exactly where they were. Uh, he knew exactly what they were. He needed Adam to locate himself. Yes. But they were ashamed. They were ashamed. That's the thing. Okay. And they were naked. They were. For the first time, they, they, they realized finally realized it. it. Right. You know? But you know, when he created them, and it's, it, when he first created them, they were naked. They were, it said and they had no shame. Right. Before they were disobedient. The sin is what brings the shame. Right. The sin, the wrong choice, that, that is, good. is what brings the, right brings the shame. I could, I mean, we could study this for a long time and yeah, really go into a lot of depth. So I'm not going to do that. I just want to kind of give you the, the, the kind of the scene of the first sin that happened. Right. But I want to focus more on our relationship with God today and what sin does to that relationship. A lot of things that people don't understand about sin is, is it causes separation. Between you and the Lord. Yes. Is, it, is that true? It is yes. true. Whenever Satan comes to you, just like we just, and, and he'll, he'll do, he does it to us, like I said today. It's so, it's so funny that you can read something in Genesis, and it's exactly the way it still is today. He'll come with you with the first thing and say, hmm, you know, I don't know. I just think God doesn't want you to have fun. He just wants you to have fun. That's just all there is to it. He's just, you know, whatever. Whatever he says. Whatever sin it is. <clears throat> Causes separation between me, between us and the Lord. What do we initially do when we sin? We pull back. We pull away. That's exactly the opposite of what we should do. Yes. When we sin, we should press in. Press into him. Go to him. Instead of running and hiding from him. Run to him instead of away from him. Run to him instead of away from him. Because he already knows anyway. So, what do we do now? Here we are. We've sinned. We've, we have the separation between God. Thank God he does not leave us there. Exactly. Thank the Lord God that we are not left there. He could have left us there. He could have said, well, you know what? It's your own fault. Right. You chose to sin. Live with the consequences. A lot of us might feel that way about people and things that happen. Let's go to 1 John chapter 1, verses 5 through 9. This is where it starts getting really good. 1 John. 1 John chapter 1, verses 5 through 9. It's over, it's over past Hebrews. Yeah. Past Peter. Chapter 1. 1 John chapter 1, verses 5 through 9. There's hope. When you see it, yes, you're yes, you have you have caused that separation of God. Yes, you have you have disobeyed the Lord. But there's hope for Jesus Christ our Lord. He paid the price for us. He became sin for us so that we don't have to stay there. Amen. And then when you're restored, I'm gonna read the scriptures about it, but when you're restored, then you're back restored to dominion. Yes. Over all the earth, over Satan, over everything. True? Yes. True. Amen. Okay. 
So I'm going to start reading uh, chapter uh, verse 5. This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and him, in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one another with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, and he, is faith, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen? Amen. I want to look at the first, at chapter, I mean at verse 5, where it says, God is light and in him is no darkness at all. So when we sin, you know, we have that darkness in us. Well, God doesn't, God will not fellowship with darkness. Now, does that mean that he just leaves us and goes away? No, but what I'm saying is that causes that separation. Yeah. You know? And if we want to keep our relationship strong with the Lord, we can't fall for those tricks. Wow. We can't fall for those things that cause us to fall. We have to be on guard at all times. Recognize the traps. Recognize. Yeah, recognize the plans of the enemy. Jesus, our sin was put upon him that knew no sin. And we say that a lot, but really let that get that into your spirit. He knew no sin at all, but he was made sin for us so that we could be reconciled. God punished him as if he had done all the sin from every person. The punishment was what you saw him go, what the Bible shows that he went through. Yep. Yep. Just as Adam and Eve were given dominion over the earth at the beginning, Jesus, through Jesus, we are restored to that place. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yes. Let's go to Romans chapter 6. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we love you, Lord, this morning, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you for your redemption power, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you saved us, Lord. Chapter 6, verses 9. This is a lot of scriptures that I'm going to read. But it is so good. This is the part that got me really, really excited when I was reading these. When I was studying for this message. So Romans chapter 6, verses 9 through 23. Knowing that Christ, being raised from the dead, doth no more. Death hath no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once. But in that he live, he liveth unto God. Likewise, rest, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. Neither yield ye to your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, <clears throat> but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead. And your members as instruments of, righteous, of righteousness of, unto God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. What then? Shall we sin? Because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. I love that. Know you not that to whom you yield your members' servants to obey, his servants you are to whom you obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. But God has thank, God be thanked that you are the servants of that you were the servants of sin, that you have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. Being then made free free from sin, you become the servants of righteousness. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh, for you have yielded your members' servants to uncleanness and to iniquity and to to iniquity unto iniquity. Even so, now yield your member servants to righteousness under holiness. I like that scripture right there because to me it speaks, we put a lot of effort into sinning. Do we not? <laughs> yeah. When we're lost. I mean, we'll go anywhere and do anything. Go out of our way to go party or do whatever it is we're doing. We put a lot of effort into that. <clears throat> this speaks to me that whatever effort you're going to put into living unrighteous, once you're saved, you need to put all that energy into living righteous. Amen. Whatever you're going to put into that, put a hundred times more into this. Amen? 
<laughs> for when you were servants of sin, you were free from righteousness. What fruit had you then in those things whereof you are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now being made free from sin and become servants to God, you have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Lord, we thank you for your word, Lord. We thank you. Yes, hallelujah. I thank you, Lord, that you saved us, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that you redeemed us. What I'm trying to get across to you today is that you have a choice. When Satan comes to you with that temptation, we all have a choice every time it happens. We can choose to listen to him, or we can choose to listen to the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I don't want to. I don't want to go forward until I know what to do. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I have other things that I wanted to say, but the Lord's kind of stopping me here. I'm not sure exactly why. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Lord, we love you this morning. Thank you. I think that you know Jesus. The sin, the sin issue has been covered and dealt with through Jesus. But as a Christian, even when we're saved and we still step out and whatever you want to call it, do a sin or make a mistake or something that's not pleasing to God, what happens is our heart condemns us. And the devil is, the devil is right there to say, you think God's going to listen to you? You know what you did. You know what you thought. You know what you said. Right. So that's what it is. It's like your heart's condemning you, so you, so you, you will go away from God. But see, He's not condemning you. It says if we confess, He is He is faithful and just to forgive us. I mean, He's already forgiven us, but we have to come to Him just like your kid. You want them to fess up to. It. Yes, they're the ones that run on the wall. Mm -hmm. You know, if they never fess up to it, you can't help them know that lying is wrong. Or destructive properties, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, but they want to run away from you if it, once they know they've done something wrong. Well, that's how we are with the Lord, because their heart and their conscience is condemning them. And the devil's right there to just power it on right. like a not condemnation. Yeah, yeah you'll so. never hear a con condemnation from the voice of the Lord. If you hear con condemnation in your head, that's not the voice of God. Right. Right. Speak to, uh, God speaking you the truth through His Word. Now, yeah. will He correct you? Yes, yes He'll correct you. But never in a condemning way. No, never. never like that. And I just want to say just a couple more things, and I'm going to turn it over to you. I think that's what the Lord would have me to do. Anytime God asks you to give up something or don't do something, is because it's what He it's, He wants what's best for you. Right. It's just like in the Garden of Eden, what was best for them was not to eat. Right. That's what was best for them, but they did right. it right. So when we're when we're faced with choices in our lives, and the Lord gives us a choice, or He asks us to, oh no, Lisa, don't don't go do that. Why? Because it's what's best for me. If I can leave that sin alone, right. stay out of it. That's what's best for me. Run from it. It's not He's being mean or trying to be you know down on us or anything. It's that's what's best. Mm -hmm. Yes, Lord. I really feel the Lord show me that to have you explain this. And you kind of get a little bit, but you just got through reading it, and I want people to understand uh, God's not trying to beat us up, that, but he, He's telling us the wages of sin is death. You just got through reading that, and can you expound on that? See, God's not telling you He wants you to die, He's telling you if you stay in sin, what's going to happen. So, can you expound on that a little bit? Yeah, I mean, um, yeah, it's just like in the Garden of Eden when He gave them the penalty for them eating, disobeying them. It was, it was death, right? right? They told them that they would die. But they didn't have an immediate death. They didn't automatically die right that second when they committed that sin. Death was spiritual. It was they spiritual got death, right. but not a physical death. Not yet. Yeah. And that's what that's what we're kind of talking about today. The wages of sin is death, but it's more of a separation, like we talked about earlier. I think that's more of the death is what he's talking about. He goes on to say there, but the gift of God is eternal life. It's eternal life. Yep. Amen. 
Um, there was a couple other things I'm going to do, but I'm going to stop there. But I do have a word that the Lord gave me when I was um, preparing come, this message. Come closer, say it loud. And um, come closer. Say it loud. Say it loud. She's so soft spoken. Okay. Say it loud, Lisa. I wrote down the date and the time on this, just so you know. Go. For it was on July 10th, 22. I was studying. 7:43 p.m. <laughs> this is the word that the Lord gave me. He wanted me to give it to you today. So this is the word of the Lord. <clears throat> Behold, I have put a new song in your heart. The past is just that, the past. You are therefore a new creature, holy and acceptable to the holy God, our Father. I speak life to you. You are hereby new, never to be the same again. I have changed you, says the Lord of hosts. Ooh. Amen. I give you a I give you a Praise God. I want you to come in. Praise God. Praise God and pray us out. Hallelujah. That is so good. So I love it. I love it. I love it. Thank you, Lord. You know, I was just talking to a brother, cousin Ralph, this weekend <laughs> about one thing that we talked about is we have to, um, we have to, what is sin? Yes. It's, it's, it's uh, to those who know to do right and do, do it not, that's sin. Yep. It's missing the mark. It's, you know, but I can tell you there's an area in there to where there might be something that God is not dealing with the person on that have had. There's a handful of stuff that just ain't none of us need to be doing. Okay, that applies to everybody. But there's some personal things that God may not be dealing with this new Christian on just now, just this second, that He dealt with me on. That if I do it, it's going to be sin to me. But if this person. Is still walking there. God's giving them some grace. That's good. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. That, so we can't automatically say, because God is having me not do this, why are they doing it and getting by with it? That ain't our business. Mm -hmm. You know, you let Holy Spirit deal with them, and then if he directs them to you, then you can help them, whatever. But, uh, yeah. And the other thing I want to leave you with on this is, don't, let's don't be... So sin conscious, conscious. Let's be right standing with God conscious. Yes. And when I focus on yes. I am yes. the righteousness of Amen. God in Christ yeah. Jesus, yes. I am not an old sinner saved by grace. Yes. I was at the very second I got saved, yes. but one second after it, now I am the righteousness yes. of God in Christ yes. Jesus, Amen. and I am in right standing with God. And when I'm and I, re, you say that to yourself a million times a day, and when you begin to speak that of yourself, you ain't going to want to mess with all that mess over there. You ain't going to want to mess with that. Because you don't want to have to have your heart condemn you. This is going to outweigh your desire to do this thing. And if it's kind of an even deal, you say, God, break it off right now in Jesus' name. I apply the blood, and that thing is not, I don't desire that thing. You just speak it. Yes. Even though you really might, you got to speak it as though you don't. Yes. But, but God won't make you break it off. No, he won't make you. He won't make he you. He won't make you break it off. It will make you. So anyway, and if you think it's a, a thing you're having a struggle with, you might, if your friends are having a struggle with it, you might stay away from them for a while. You know what I'm saying? But let's become more conscious of who we really are in our position, our righteousness. We're the righteousness of God. Oh. How's that possible? And not just the sin conscious. And having that relationship. Because see, Jesus, Jesus ain't hanging on the cross no more. To be the sin for us, He's not laying in the tomb. He ain't in the bowels of the earth doing all the business. He is ascended and sitting at the right hand of the Father, and that's the Jesus that we're with. Yes. We're not with the one on the cross. Right, making intercession for you. Yeah, I he, you know, he made he made that ultimate intercession by what he did. So I just wanted to, Brother Lonnie, you got anything? We're just, you want to come pray us out? Yeah. That was so good, Lisa. Thank you so much for for bringing that awesome sauce. <laughs> Just pour that awesome sauce right on there. <laughs> you know, we're, we're, we're all guilty of, you know, looking at people around us. The first thing we got to do is look at ourselves. Yes, right in the mirror. And uh, when we begin to look at our life and we begin to examine who we are and and let other people see, you know, sometimes the best thing to do is people to see the mistakes in us because we're all imperfect people. Christ was perfect. Through him we're made perfect, but we still make mistakes. Lonnie Heslip still make, but I don't stay there. Right. But what I will tell you right. today is 
let's quit judging each other and be, let's learn to disciple one another because realness is is saying you know I, I hope my brothers and sisters can come to me and say hey Lonnie or, or ask me if they you know some people have she said it a while ago some things that I may call sin God may say that it's not sin in that person's life now don't get that misunderstood maybe that person is just a new Christian and they don't understand certain things as they grow as I grew in the Lord I didn't wear short sleeve shirts anymore to show my tattoos. Nothing wrong with showing your tattoo. But it was a conviction for me. You understand what? Don't mean because your tattoo showing this morning that that means nothing. But I quit. I always wore them. I called them muscle shirts. And and uh, I was at the church one day up here at a car. This play before we ever got married. At a car wash. And the Holy Spirit convicted me like that and said, don't wear that, that shirt in front of these kids with all your tattoos showing I never thought about it till right then. So see, as I, we grow in the Lord, our convictions... And there may be some that he never tells that to. may not never tell that to nobody. He may never tell anybody well, else to cover this. Too, our focus changes yes. more yes. on the relationship and being right with the right. versus the sin. But I will say this this morning. as a man of God standing up here that I'm obligated to tell us, even though, we, you know, even though we all still have our faults and we all still we sin sometimes and don't even know it. Christ has covered that. I want you to know that this morning. But what I want you to know is the Lord wants us to know today that let's don't live in sin. I don't need to live in sin and know about it. I need to repent means it don't mean always to fall on our face and say Lord forgive me. Yes we do need to confess but it means to turn away from it. Confess it to him. And and don't do it no more. You know and I'll tell you what works for me and it may not work for you is I say, Lord, I, I don't know how I need you to help me. I don't know how to do this. I, I don't trust myself in this. I need you to I need you to open it up to me in a way that I understand. And he does. Every time. Not sometimes, but when I do that, when I'm honest with God, see we want to hide from God. What they do, they went and hid. They were they realized they were naked, they were they went and hid. You know, they God knew where they was. We never can hide from God. But God ain't mad at you. And he's not God's not a shame. God don't see us like we see us. Right. Let me just say that. So Hallelujah. So He don't see us like that Hallelujah. this morning. Let's know that He loves us no matter Thank where we're Father. at. And if we'll just simply receive Him today. Thank you, Father. you know, Hallelujah. sometimes I just have to start over. Have you ever had to start over? I had to start over the other night. Let me tell you something. My spirit was sick. You know why? Because I'm so close to the Lord. And so when I stepped out of my spirit into my flesh, it made me ill. It made me very ill. And I'll tell you this today. If we'll receive Christ as Lord and Savior today, say, Thank Lord, come into my life. Yes, Lord. Lord, take my life over today. Hallelujah. Lord, Hallelujah. Lord, forgive me a sinner, Hallelujah. Lord God, Hallelujah. that I would yes, not Lord. go out and do the things Hallelujah. that I used to do. Yes, Lord, Lord God, forgive me today. And, and if you'll just yes, say those Lord. things and be able to let let. Let him love on yes, you. Amen. Let him love you today. It don't matter what you done yesterday. It don't matter what you done five minutes ago. But if you'll say, Lord, help me out of this mess that I've got myself into today. He'll do it. Amen. He'll do it right yes, there. Yes, and he'll will. forgive you right there. It's Thank that simple. Jesus. And then get up, put I always say, Thank put your big boy breeches and your big girl breeches on and say, Lord, you're enough. And let him More put you on your Woo! life. Today, More if, than if you'll do that, I yes. promise you one thing: you're saved. No, you're gonna fall down, and you're gonna still saved. Get your knees dirty sometimes, but we get up, yes. pick ourselves back up, and say, "Lord, forgive me," and, and move the next on right to thing. the right thing. On, yes. <laughs> Not, we don't turn around and go yes. this way to the wrong yes. thing, but we'll turn around, do the next right thing, and do the right thing. It's that simple living for God. And let me you're, just, going, you're going to fail sometimes, I'll tell you. Let me say you. this. If there's an area that you keep, if there's one area that you just cannot get victory over, you might need some help and some personal yes. prayer. You might need some personal prayer. That's right. you know, and you, but, but examine it with the Lord. Lord, what's the root of that thing? And the Holy Spirit can show you. And you come and get some of your brothers and sisters across that you can trust to... Right. You know, not tell your exactly. business and, and that that can get a hold of God and we'll pray that thing we'll cut that thing off. Yes, we'll cut yes, the head yes, of that yes. thing off the root of it out in the name of Jesus through the, the blood of, of God Jesus. says 
one brings one thousand, two brings ten thousand. If you're struggling and you and you want somebody to pray with you and you want somebody to get in the dirt with you, you call old brother Lonnie and sister Weezy. And we'll get down in the dirt with you, and we'll I'll pour that anointing all all over you, and I'll love I'll you. I'll get the shovel, man. And I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll tell you how much God loves you and how much I love you here, because baby. it don't make no difference where you at right now. That's right. You call the number at the beginning of this video, and I'll drive and meet you, and I'll tell you how much God loves you. Because he loves you and he Amen. don't want us to stay. The message this morning, let's get out of the sin. Yes. If we know it, if we recognize it, let's run to God. Yes. Let Amen. God, let God have control because he'll knock. You know what he does? He wads it up and bam, it's gone. He don't remember it. No, we want to keep it. We want to carry it around the block don't with us. Don't go to that mess. We don't want to, hey. He loves you this morning. Yes, amen. I love you, but I can't touch how he loves you. He loves yes. you more than anything. Yes. And he wants to. Let me tell you, can I ask you, I, there's some people out here now, I'm not going to embarrass them or say their names. Have you ever felt God wrap his arms around you? Yes. Uh, yes. yes. Have you ever felt that? Uh, if you yes. hadn't, there's no experience. There's not a woman or a man can touch you like God touches Yes, amen. Yes. Because when he, be, when he, when he grabs your hand to hold your hand, it's so intimate that I can't even explain it. He taught me how to love Sister Lisa. I didn't know how to love nothing. I didn't know how to love my kids. I didn't know how to love a woman. But God, but God, God taught me how to love people. And hear her favor say, love them right. Yep, love them right. We love you guys in Jesus' name. We'll see y'all next time. Amen. 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 Woohoo! Thank you, Jesus.